This is Western Europe's biggest mosque, home to the National Peace Symposium. It's become a permanent fixture here in London, organised by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, but open to all religious faiths. Hazrat Mirza Mazarur Ahmad explains why the event is held. It's to promote love, affection, brotherhood and peace. The event takes place every year and attracts people from all walks of life, from politicians to academics. People will see hope from this event and I think that a lot of people who are open-minded will take a positive uh, take from this event and they will know that we are trying to defend uh, the true teaching of Islam in this country. The great thing about events like this is not just the, the speeches that will be made by important people, it's also the fact that there are many people who come who will meet each other, who will get a different perspective uh, and a greater understanding of uh, the different communities that live within this country and uh, also the issues that the uh, Ahmadi Muslim community face overseas as well. And I think that's equally important that we do understand how often you face real difficulties in other countries. The Ahmadi motto is love for all, hatred for none. But in Pakistan, the community has faced years of persecution. Last year, more than 90 people were killed after gunmen stormed a mosque packed with Ahmadi worshippers. It was an atrocity that shocked the world and was condemned at the Peace Forum. After that terrible incident, we held the first debate in Parliament ever on the Ahmadiyya community, uh, on what happened in Pakistan with the massacre, uh, and uh, we are constantly keeping the government to account by asking questions in Parliament about the formation of the group, uh, and constantly just keeping the profile up of the community uh, and its concerns. Like the Ahmadis, Christians too have suffered at the hands of hardline militant groups. Millions of people are still coming to terms with the death of Shabazz Bati, Pakistan's Minister for Minorities. He fought for justice and equal rights, but was assassinated shortly after leaving his mother's home in Islamabad. He was known and respected throughout the world, and those who took part in the peace talks believe his legacy will live on. Clearly there is a great responsibility and burden on the Pakistan government in tackling this problem. As a friend of Pakistan, we must all be trying to encourage the Pakistan government to face up to this challenge. The anxiety is that everybody has become so frightened of intolerance that it becomes easier for good men to say nothing. And if good men say nothing, then these problems will continue. A special peace prize was handed out to the ED Foundation, a charity which for the last 50 years has carried out 24-hour relief work in disaster-hit areas in Pakistan and around the world. One of the burning issues affecting all minority groups in Pakistan is the country's outdated blasphemy law, seen by many as an excuse to discriminate and persecute Hindus, Sikhs, Ahmadis and Christians. Millions want the Pakistani government to repeal it. Mirza Amjad Hussain told Pakar News it was a subject particularly close to his heart. My own family has been the victim of it. My brother was out there. He, he was charged uh, on a petty case and he spent a uh, significant time behind bars. So I can speak uh, you know, with expertise on this thing and... Uh, I had to fight tooth and nail to get my brother out of Pakistan. Uh, I know at the moment this law is, uh, you know, discriminates against uh, a wide swathe of, uh, you know, people in Pakistan. Not just the Christians, but also uh, the Ahmadis as well as uh, Muslims generally. This was the eighth peace symposium. It gets bigger year by year. Preparations are already underway for next year's conference. This is Anna Moran for Pakar News.